Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not a good camera guy. I was like, I didn't know if I should like try to clap, but I'm also holding the phone. I'm here, on so. the other side of the camera now. Yeah. We did the old switcheroo. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt so. Like and, and the reason that like prompted this was because uh, earlier we had mentioned that, um, you know, you, you were just listening to the radio, I guess, on your way to work. And, you know, it like something about something that you heard just, you know, it really kind of set you off. So, so you, why, why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I came over here and I started talking about things that happened to me this week that I wanted to express on the show. Um, you know, I wanted to bring in things that are pertinent to things that happened this week. I want to bring that onto the show. Um, something that happened to me happened this morning, actually. Just in like the ordinary sort of spaces within which you're just occupying like a labor position for a job or whatever yeah. in the workforce. Ordinary kind of shit. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, it was pitch black outside. Yeah. I was parked in the parking lot at, uh, at uh, Ops, as they call it waiting for seven o'clock to roll around so I can walk into work. And I'm listening to uh, News 95.7 on FM radio. Oh yeah. Which I don't do too They much. love that Richard Zorowski guy. He was running for the p political party recently, actually. They're, he yeah. used to be their talk radio guy. Is he guy. still running for office? I don't know, he was a Green Party, which is kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like 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 the more, like the smarter boomers all like that guy, but they're still boomers. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, they're in, they're within that. So. I mean, full yeah. dis full disclosure, I have I haven't tuned into that in a while. I just turned on the FM radio because I wasn't gonna connect my phone honestly to the to the speakers. Yeah. So anyway, I'm listening to FM radio this morning. I'm listening to ninety five seven and the news comes on obviously, and it's a story about COVID. And like all of our stories, you should mention. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, it's just something in relation to COVID is our news now. Yeah, basically. It's, 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 you know, or the, 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 the way that, because anything that would just be a normal uh, news event as well that would be reported anyway, they'll still need to make their statements about how COVID is impacting it and yeah. affecting it. Yeah. Or, or non-binary. And they'll spend most of the time on that. Yeah. Or, or non-binary non Filipinos. Yeah. I was going to mention that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm listening to the radio this morning. This is the story. Listen to FM radio this morning. A news story comes on. It's about COVID. Specifically, it's about the effects on our children. So our children who are not in school right now, still, they're learning online, remote learning. There's hesitation in Canada. I mean, every province is doing it differently, but the children still aren't back in school. And a woman was speaking on the radio. I think she was a teacher or a school board member or some sort of superintendent or administrator or something. And she said that our children are extremely resilient, which is a painful piece of propaganda. It's also quite true though, as well. That's the thing is I, I mentioned this as well before the cameras mm -hmm. were on, is our children are resilient. However, this does not mean that we should subject them to needless harm. Our children are resilient in that they will adapt to their environment. Whatever it may be. They're, they're... But everything's been so exponential, John. Like, you know, the rate at which things have been getting worse is exponential because technology is exponential with, with computers and stuff yeah. and the capabilities. So it's been crazy, you know, and like unprecedented. Oh, yeah. Le you know, levels of acceleration of just how, like, the rate at which things have been getting worse in just very general, broad, overall sense has oh, been yeah. accelerated immensely in the last couple of generations at le levels that are not linear by any stretch of the imagination. No, they yeah. are exponential, absolutely. And I'm 29 years old, and mm -hmm. you're the same. I just turned 29 a couple so, days ago, yeah. You know, we're, 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 we're saying this having seen these transitions, you know, when I was in junior high, Facebook became a thing. Anyway, I don't want to derail that though. So, so you had some more points about that though, about like the, the, uh, the way that the children are being represented in this narrative, didn't you? Yeah. So I heard this woman say on the radio, our children are extremely resilient and it just set me off. And I was sitting in my car in the parking lot and I just started screaming in my own car, 
and I'm alone. No one else can hear me. I'm, yeah. par I'm parked at the end of the park. Because this is literally what we've gotten to. They're, they're fucking sacrificing their own children and coming up with bullshit to support this stupid narrative that's obviously retarded. Sacrificing our children. Our own children. We are sacrificing. And women are going to forgo being a loving and, and beloved wife and mother so that they can make PowerPoints to just brainwash other mothers' children who are doing the same thing so that they can afford to buy Louis Vuitton handbags because that's what their empowerment is. And their empowerment has gotten to the point that they're literally on OnlyFans, you know, taking off clothing so that they can earn enough money to go buy a meal at McDonald's. So that's the empowerment and the liberation of women like fuck you know we just need to you know jump ship on our women then like they they you know it's a casualty that you know cannot be redeemed but there are ones that are struggling and they're out there and you know, usually they're autistic or whatever but you can find them yeah, yeah. i mean gotta look for them can't yeah, just dismiss the entire fucking you know, it's just hard because, you know, all the areas have been shut down where you could even go to, you know, potentially find one of these these creatures, these almost mythical fucking creatures. You know, the the, the reason that, that I, you know, agreed to make this content is because, you know, for young men and women like myself in my demographic, but also older people and people younger than myself, you know, of all genders and, and races and economic backgrounds and whatever your political affiliation is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to use this moment, this critical moment, like Russell said, a, a sort of moment of revolutionary... Uh, Thought, just breaking free for, through many different people's phones and everything all at once. You know, all, yeah. you know this, this dissident energy, we're trying to reach out to it and, and contribute to it as well, um, that our society hopefully can use this energy to make a change. So I'm in the parking lot screaming to myself in my car that... Our children are extremely resilient, which means they will adapt to their environment. They, they, they will adapt to remote learning. They will adapt to not socializing with each other. And how can we justify this as a society? We're sacrificing our well, children. Well, the reality is it's happening whether we like it or not due to geopolitical issues that we've been misled about and are completely hidden from us. And, you know, they're all complicit in that in one way or another. But we're basically at the mercy of whatever the New World Order wants it to be, and they are no longer the same administration at this point. The transition is happening. That's why all this shit's happening. The West is, a as, as they would view it, pretty much barbarians. We need to be broken down and taught how to behave just in society in general. So, of course, making everybody follow stupid rules and shit is just an effective way to do that and to get people to submit to the government. You know, one of the, the, the COVID tests where they stick the swab up your nose you know, like the ancient Egyptians used to do that to disable, like, you know, disobedient slaves, parts of their brains so they'd be more docile and shit, right? Like, but just the action itself of just, you know, submitting on that level that you're willing to let this stranger stick a rod up into your nose very close to your brain, in fact, you know, as part of some system, like, that's way worse than just voting to it, you know? Like, like it's getting weird, you know? Because, like, to me, that's all just a fucking religion, COVID. It's like the new god. None of it's actually based on real science, at all, or at least not in so far as a narrative. So the fact that people will do this, it's almost like a weird cult behavior that they're, you know, just like getting the injections, getting the boosters. They're all just signifying their fealty and undying loyalty towards a sinking ship of the West that's just not going to make it. And we have to fucking get off that and start building our own islands, is my, in my opinion. What do you think about that? So I'm supposed to be asking questions. <laughs> what, but that was, what. so how do you feel about that idea? <laughs> Well, uh, succinctly, I agree that we we need to start, you know, looking outside of society broadly to, you know, have self sufficiency, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what I wanted to say is, the next person who spoke on the radio, she was a mother, and uh, she said, you know, my toddler, she's two years old. And she thinks it's normal to wear a mask. She puts on her jacket, she puts on her hat, she puts on her mask, and she doesn't think anything of it. And I'm screaming 
in my car. And right, because of course she's saying this as if it's like a good thing, is how easy it is, how great our kids are at adapting. No, you don't realize that that's permanent developmental disorders that for, of which we, like our fucking pharmacists and or whatever, you know, our, our, our crony people that are in the medicine and the writing the literature, they just haven't even created those new acronyms yet for those new mental health issues that are going to emerge from all this bullshit. We haven't, you know, like this is, we're going to uncharted territory here. And I think very few people really understand you know like how severe this could potentially be for them right like you can't just take a people and completely flip their social parameters you know like like they may be able to continue to exist but they'll be completely disenfranchised and i can tell you as a canadian like we're already pretty fucking disenfranchised as it is right and then you know for our entire way of life as we know it to be flipped pretty much on its head on top of that would be, you know, a, a lot for many people to handle. And I don't know that many people would handle it very well. Two-year-old, two-year-old little girl. She thinks the mask is normal because she's two years old. Yeah. She's, she's been having a mask put on her for two years, presumably. And going forward, that's going to continue. So this is when they learn and experience and climatize the reality during the, for like the formative, the most formative and, you know, like all these psychoanalysts talk about like how important those first developmental years are of the brain. You know, like it's only once you become an adult and your brain stops developing that you kind of start finally getting your bearings with all this shit, right? Like, yeah, you know, we've both been able to go through that in recent years and Pretty much everybody that goes that, if they're a strong, good person, they'll, they'll come out and kind of, you know, it's just, you know, humanity's been put through such a meat grinder, right? And this isn't even to speak of our adolescents and high school students who have been in school, then out of school, then in school. Missing their proms. I remember going to a shopping, a retail store, and all of the young little girls working the cashiers because that was okay. If working at a retail store, they're wearing their prom dresses because their prom had been canceled on them. They just had already got the dresses, so they didn't want to waste the money or whatever, and they still wanted to and wear, wear them. And, and wearing a mask. So that's the resilience of our children right there. And wearing a mask. Yep, of course. So. Well, working to well, pay for probably, like, you know, because our families certainly don't have as much money as they used to be able to bring up these kids. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, this is basically what I did this morning before I went into work on a Friday morning and I don't listen to FM radio very much, but when I did, you know, this is what I've exposed to. Like, Russell yeah, that's like, you know, every, everything, if it's on the radio, it's, 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 it's propagandized. Like that's just, you know, because these, these, these different extensions of media are, are thoroughly controlled in very integrated ways that are very foundational, right? Like anyone that is involved is like, uh, you know, has like some kind of degree in journalism or some shit or whatever. Like they've had to, you know, be in a significant amount of grooming institutions, spend a lot of time in those rooms, and then after be accepted for this role, right? So, you know, that's who's selected to present things to us. And it's yeah. important we always remember that when we're listening to whatever it is that some talking head on TV is saying. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, I thought I'd tune into 95.7 to see what the folks in Halifax are listening to. I don't know, it just, uh, I almost had an aneurysm. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's like the most respected news station that we have as well. Yeah. Yeah.